So leading on then from that other video that I've just made, um, speaking about when we have a spiritual awakening, we wake up to our spirit, our true essence, and we realize that uh, we're just having a uh, sojourn. So let's just talk about now the world and the machinations and um, how we're all being manipulated, farmed, and having our life source extracted. So, you know, we're all familiar with the, uh, the term bread and circus, which the Roman leaders always used to provide for the masses to keep them in a state of satiation uh, a nullified numb state of satiation you see Caesar's worked out that if they uh, stockpiled grain and gave it free to the people in need then the people in need of course will be less likely to bite the hand that fed them and they will consider the state more uh, benevolent but you see the state would get the people to harvest all the grain to transport it and um, you know to build these storage places um, so they could be given it back to a later stage <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? And um, so uh, that's uh, where the bread facet of bread and circus came from. And then the circus, of course, was the uh, the, the Colosseums and you know the the variety of entertainments, maybe the theatres, and um, you know any other number of activity which would keep um, the masses um, distracted. Uh, sporting events, you know, the Romans, uh, Greeks, wasn't it, who invented the Olympics, and you know, so they used to do all that sort of stuff, didn't they? Uh, whatever you could draw the crowd with to uh, give them something to focus on, something to talk about, something to look forward to, uh, those sort of things. So, bread and circus. Uh, and then, when the masses have, have been satiated by their bread and circus, and on lots of instances, the circus involved watching people shed blood because people need to see the blood being shed. And so it's a curious thing because, you know, the question I have to ask you guys now is that I've known for a very long time that when I do my ranting obnoxious videos, they're always, you know, at the very, very least, uh, as popular um, as any other of my videos but most of the time they're more popular and they inspire people or uh, give rise to knee-jerk reactions which trigger people uh, into getting engaged commenting and this and the other and so you know, I'll make these videos and then I'll have the engagement again. And then I'll put some nice videos and some moderate videos up. And the enthusiasm will wane, uh, the thumbs up will start to diminish, the comments will diminish, and the viewers, uh, viewership will diminish. And so I have to know that um, uh, just like uh, the Romans and just like what the world's doing now, you need the bread and circus you need uh, to be able to smell and taste the blood and so what I'm doing I suppose is it's a modern version of um, what went on in the Colosseum uh, it's just entertainment isn't it you know when I'm blustering and I'm saying you know, obnoxious and um, outlandish things, and it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, you know, because y you all feel like saying it, you know, at some stage, don't you? Only most of you don't. You don't have the uh, platform 
and um, if you did do that in your local vicinity then you'd get sacked or you know you, you, your partner would leave you or you, you'd end up in a big argument and this and that so therefore you have to look for it somewhere else and there's not too many portals on YouTube which will give you that and so if you really feel like effing and blinding and cussing uh, and y you have a certain disposition within you how you think and feel but you aren't uh, able to release that yourself then uh, you look for it somewhere else so these things these are the latest scourge of our streets at some stage it used to be these little um, capsules, these little uh, steel canisters of nitrous oxide, you know, um, the laughing gas, uh, which incidentally was a big rage with the uh, intellectuals in the mid 1800s. You know, all the gentry and all the balls and everything like that, they used to have this uh, nitrous oxide and um, you know, many people didn't know that. They weren't aware of that. They thought maybe it's just this new thing um, that, you know, scumbags get involved with and they're always throwing the canisters, you know, out the car and they're all over the place. But now these are all over the place. You know, just like cigarette butts used to be all over the place. People just, you know, just throw them down. And it's completely unnecessary. And, um, yeah. It's a mentality, isn't it? It's just like a non-appreciative mentality. Um, lack of satiation. I mean, they're, they're, they're supping on this because they, they feel uh, unsatiated and they just need a little bit more. You know, it's like nicotine, just need a little bit more. Caffeine, just a little bit more. Alcohol, just a little bit more. Um, vapes, just a little bit more. They just need a little bit more than what they're getting through their average human experience. And, you know, this is a thing that's been around for thousands of years as a human being. We like to experience all the states of consciousness, and I'm no exception to the rule. Um, you know, this is why I was on Kratom for some time, because it just takes you five degrees, you know, east or west of north. And, um, you know, I'm really enjoying being bang on north these days. Uh, and my only excursion from sobriety um, is like uh, one bottle of Newcastle Brown, which I uh, enjoy each day. Uh, but uh, anyway, getting back to um, the bread and circus thing. Um, you know, if you want to put some comments down as to why you uh, are stimulated by my obnoxious rants, um, is it because... Um, you know, I'm saying it to those that you want to say it to. I mean, very, very rarely do I get to anybody that feels I'm directing it at them. Um, and, and that's the curious thing. So, um, you know, out of, say, like 200 viewers, um, nobody will call, be calling me or telling me this or telling me that. You know, and if anybody ever does, then it's kind of like, you know, one in 200. So it's a very, very small percentage who feel smited uh, by what I'm saying and feel as if I'm speaking to them. Um, well, you know, if the hat fits, then wear it. That's what I say. But most of you don't. You, you let it pass over you and you, you consider it's directed to uh, other people and not you because you evidently feel that you're more evolved than... Um, the people I'm directing it to and watching my videos you should be being on my channel you should be and so therefore whenever I'm saying you 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 well you don't think it's you you just think it's like uh, them behind you uh, don't you and um, doubtless most of the time it is but um, there's a need for uh, this level of agitation uh, and I think it's going to be become more um, sought after as we feel more and more repressed as we are threatened more and more 
um, with um, being cancelled because of our opinions, because of our so-called hate speech, you know, directed to the cosmos, to humanity, to, you know, it doesn't have to be directed to anybody in particular. Just if you're uttering what could be considered to be hate, then, you know, certain sectors of the world want to cancel you. And, you know, if everybody gets cancelled, then what are we going to do? Where are the masses going to go um, to receive their fix? Uh, they're going to have to get it from somewhere because we cannot live this passive, all-forgiving, love and light lives. We need more. We need the dark side, people. Uh, you know, we're 50% light, 50% dark. That's the nature of the cosmos. And if we don't get fed what we need, then we're going to get pissed. And just like um, any drug addict, uh, they're going to be very angry when they've not got their fix. And so... Um, you know, I don't know what the, the powers that be are expecting uh, to derive out of this. Whether they seriously believe that they can get, they can create an Aldous Huxley's brave new world where everybody is pacified by a variety of potion called Soma. Um, you know, um, the opiate of the masses. Uh, there's lots of opiates of the masses and, um, that keep the, the masses tranquilised. But, um, you know, one of the opiates is um, blood and gore. And uh, it's obvious that we need this blood, gore and destruction. Otherwise, the, our movies wouldn't be full of it. But if any time a movie is a blockbuster, uh, then it is one of these varieties of movies, isn't it? It isn't this love and light stuff. Nobody's interested in the love and light. Ah, oh, okay, people can watch it for about 15 minutes before they get bored. And then they want to see uh, something being blown up or someone's head being cut off or all that sort of thing. And um, so it's a very, very deep-rooted facet of the human being. And, of course, becoming spiritually awoken to this, uh, we, we don't have any doubts about it. And we embrace it. We accept it. And this is the whole concept behind the Jungian shadow. We have to look deep within to discover the unconscious facets about us, which are not soci sociably acceptable and so we keep them buried and we keep them hidden you know all of our vices whether it's like our sexual perversions or our pet hates or you know our you know uh, evil machinations that we're always trying to do manipulate people and you know all these sort of things um, they all pertain to the shadow, and uh, the shadow needs um, exploring, and it needs um, laying on the table. But it's very difficult to do this because it's in the unconscious thing. And so, how do we look into the unconscious when the unconscious is unconscious to us? Well, we, we can do this via dreams, because dreams derive from our unconscious. So by analysing our dreams, this is why dream analysing um, or the uh, 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 interpretation of dreams was very, very powerful um, in Jungian and Freudian psychology because there's a great deal to be uh, derived out of our dreams. And um, But, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort and uh, you, you have to acquire knowledge um, uh, through experience to do that. But uh, very few people have the time to introspect and to uh, do what Socrates encourages all to do, to know thyself. Because when you know thyself, then you know everybody else. Because when you know thyself, you know your psychology. You are aware of your shadow aspects. You are aware of the potential evil within you. And so then, of course, you're aware of all these things in everybody else. And so there's no surprises, is there, people, at the end of the day? And uh, so, yeah, you know, um, uh, one of the viewers uh, remarked, Ah, oh, uh, I'm glad you're back. And I'd seen this viewer's uh, icon 
um, you know, not that often, but it, most certainly within the last year. And so I knew that um, this person knew I was back in the sense that I'm back on the channel. Uh, and I thought, well, OK, it's so obviously that, you know, oh, Mr. Nasty's back, Mr. Supercilious is back. Um, and that was the case. And uh, the viewer states that um, now and again uh, she needs to, to see this character because um, it um, you know brings about alignment uh, with uh, her own uh, spirits and characters and personas. And you know we, we need to have a certain realization that we are all potentially um, uh, given to. You know, blustering and, and, and speaking belligerently and demeaning and decrying people and things um, and you know very often uh, it's evident that people don't really mean that you know it's like when kids get angry I hate you I wish you were dead well <laughs> who is saying that <laughs> I hate you, I wish you were dead. It just, it's just the ego saying, I just wish I could get everything my own way, but you are preventing me from doing it. So I wish you was just gone so I could get everything I wanted. But of course your parents couldn't be gone because they're responsible for giving you everything you want. And if you want your hand in the cookie jar, you know, more than an appropriate amount of times, then, you know, ego's going to be pissed. <laughs> uh, and so we do it as adults as well, people. And so when I look into my psyche and I go, OK, well, what's going on with me then? Uh, why do I, you know, make these uh, particular variety of video? And it's kind of like, well, again, for many reasons. Um, you know, one reason is that um, I get pissed off um, with um, the failings of the human being. Because at the end of the day, people, look, if the human being fails, uh, if, let's just say, the masses uh, fail, then everybody fails. Because the, 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 the masses will be responsible for taking humanity in a certain direction. And this is why it's so important to, to hang on to our integrity and to not get caught up in the Mexican wave of manipulation and propaganda, uh, to introspect and to step outside um, of the madness and to uh, regroup and, um, you know, collectivise um, the facets of ourselves that we hold to be um, wholesome. Uh, with a high level of integrity, you know, those sort of things. And we've got to stand by them because, you know, these days there's many energies which are absolutely intent to destroy those, to destroy your personal integrity, to destroy your personal um, uh, point of view because you're not supposed to have a point of view outside of the state. And this goes back to George Orwell's 1984. Um, because uh, you, you've just got to fall in line with the party line. And that's what the machinations of the world are endeavouring to do, to get you to fall in line with their party line. And um, But if we can uh, avoid that, uh, if we can be woken up from time to time, and obviously this is what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm endeavouring to shake you up, to shock you a little bit. To shock you um, into being obnoxious yourself and being demeaning yourself and telling me that I'm all the cunts under the sun. Because uh, then I would say to you, well look, that's the direct reflection of your anger, of what you are. Because you've took it on board to uh, receive what I've been saying as a direct attack on you. And so therefore there's something subliminal within your unconscious that you are aware of and you don't like. So you've got to address that. And so I give you the opportunity to do that. And anybody that's a little bit savvy uh, will realise things like this. And um, like this lady says, you know, it, it brings her in line because um, it's going to give rise to opportunity to, to look at your own self. And I'm always saying, aren't I, that these videos I'm making, people, they're not about me. And even though I tell all stories about me and my experience, they're not about me. They're an opportunity for... Uh, you to look at yourselves, for you to uh, look at your shadow, for you to introspect, for you to form your own opinions based on your own experience and your own knowledge. 
and you just listen to me um, as kind of like just um, a, a, an idea. You know, lots of people say, oh, you give me an idea. Well, that's it. I don't want you to take on what I'm saying, verbatim, or, you know, take on my philosophy as your philosophy. Uh, I want to encourage you to find your own philosophy and do, do your own research and your own work and all that sort of thing. Listen to my videos and be inspired. That's the thing, you know, you don't have to take anything uh, seriously, what I'm saying, um, because we've all got our own subjective experiences and we're all projecting our own shit out onto the world. And so you just look at um, what people are saying and you ask yourself, is that useful to me? Could I use that? And if you think you could, then you do. And if it doesn't register, then you're not ready for it yet. That's how it is, isn't it?